As we've mentioned in previous videos, investing in a good quality microphone can make all the difference to your recording setup. However, you're going to need an audio interface or mixer to power a lot of the most popular microphones at the moment. So in today's edition of the studio, we're going to be talking about which one is right for you, a mixer or an audio interface. Let's find out. Mixers are audio devices that can route and adjust a bunch of analog audio signals from things such as XLR, RCA, quarter inch, 3.5 millimeter, that kind of connection. Some of them also do USB inputs. These are particularly useful if you're managing a lot of sources. Say you're doing a live event or you're doing a complicated live stream, but live events, tournaments, music, that's the kind of stuff mixers are going to be particularly useful for. Now, I'm using a mixer at the moment, a Yamaha mixer. This is plugged into that right now, or otherwise I would show you it. You can put it all into the mixing console. And also, if it's got USB, you can have it do a loopback feature. So the audio from your computer can come not only out, but in and back around. So you can have all stuff like your music tracks running whilst you record a new bit of audio. So say you're recording a new guitar part or something like that, something you've already recorded. Plug in the guitar into the mix console, but then your PC audio is coming in and then that loops back into XSplit and you can broadcast that to the internet or record the video for later on. Key feature you want to look out for regarding mixing consoles is something like phantom power. A lot of condenser microphones need phantom power in order to work, so the ability to use phantom power is pretty important. Now, my microphone isn't a condenser microphone, but I do use phantom power with it. Let's see? Sorry for the tapping noise. But you see there, I've got a fat head filter plugged into that. That means I can run phantom power through my specific microphone, which means I don't need as much gain on the mixing desks. So phantom power, something you generally want most of the time. So do look out for that. One important note about mixers is electrical noise. So unless you have been absolutely blessed by the electrical gods or some sort of amazing god tier electrical engineer set up the room that you're recording in, you're going to get some sort of electrical buzz. Now, one of the things you can do about this is use a ground loop isolator. These are small little things that you plug into the input and then plug into the mixing desk. And these, they sometimes don't completely eliminate that kind of distinctive buzz noise you'll hear, but they can go a long way. And most of the time, they will eliminate them to the point where you're not going to hear it anymore. It can be super essential if you've got a lot of stuff plugged into your mixing board or if you happen to be plugging into the 3.5 jack on the back of your computer and you're doing everything analog, like you don't have a USB connection on your mix decks, you're just going directly into your computer with a 3.5, definitely going to want a ground loop isolator because you're going to get a ton coming from that computer back into the mixer Ground loop isolators can save the day in that kind of a setup. One final thing, I suppose, is the size of a mixer. Now, the one I'm using is particularly tiny. It fits right on my desk. But the more inputs you want, the bigger the mix desk's going to be. Like, you, you've you seen, like, a music documentary where they go into a recording studio. They can be the size of a room, <laughs> like a mix desk. If you want more and more inputs, the mix desk is going to get bigger. However, if you are plugging in a microphone, one external source, and that's it, you can get yourself a small one and route a lot of your PC through it and do some pretty fancy stuff that a mixing console can do without having to have a giant one. So it can still fit on your desk, which is super helpful in a home studio kind of setup. Audio interfaces are type of mixer but a type of mixer with a really specific use case so i have one here little focus right 2i2 this is generally the one you'll be advised to get like if you need more inputs you can get different ones but as you can see we're sort of doing xlr and quarter inch input and then on this one you got a little bit for the gain and kind of that's it but usb connection which is generally the way they tend to work and 
With that, you tend to get drivers you need to download to get it to work, and you tend to get a bit of software that will let you adjust levels, adjust sometimes the gain if it's not on the front like that, stuff like that. Now, one of the big advantages of audio interfaces is that the quality can generally be a lot higher. Your sample rate and your bit depth can be a lot higher on these kind of interfaces. So the sample rate is basically the resolution at which the audio is captured. So the higher the sample rate, the higher the quality of the audio coming in, as long as you've got all your levels adjusted right before you started recording. Bit depth is the dynamic range of your recording, which basically means the volume sort of level at which you can bring in the recording. Now, a lot of recording software will cut off at 24 bits. However, a lot of these little audio interfaces will do 32 bit, which means you can get more sound coming in from your recording, essentially. And again, it leads to higher quality. A lot of these are preferred by musicians who want to plug in like a microphone or a guitar and they want to pick up very high quality sound. Most audio interfaces will have phantom power. Like this one's got a little button right in the front, which turns the phantom power on and off. A lot of the software will have some really cool stuff. So you can add kind of specific preamps to your microphone. Some of them will have limiters. So it will cut off when your voice is clipping, if you start shouting or anything like that. One of the big advantages, as you can see by the fact that I'm just holding this and waving it around, it's super small. Like, and you can get smaller ones than this. Like this is not the smallest kind of audio interface you can get. You can get tiny ones. Like larger versions of this generally are also designed to be rack mounted. So you can just plug it directly into whatever rack setup you've got going on at home. That's a big advantage to these things. Cause honestly, even the small mixer I'm using is bigger than that. So if space really is a premium and you don't need to be doing live adjustments on the fly, like I like to do live streaming. So live adjustments on the fly, great. If you're recording a guitar, you don't need to be doing stuff all the time. And a lot of it you can do in software, as I said. So that could be a big advantage to some people. So which one is right for you? Honestly, a lot of that stuff really is the crux. Like if you need to record high quality audio, audio interface. If you're not worried about adjusting sound levels, audio interface. However, if you're going to be running live content, if you're going to be doing stuff where you want a lot of inputs going in, then you can have them all individually adjusted. A mix is best for you. Now, regardless of which device you're using, XSplit products are going to work well with them. If you're using XSplit Broadcaster, your mixer will work just fine if you're running your live stream or if you're recording content. It will pick it up on line in or USB. You just set it up in the preferences, set your system sound correctly and all will work. Use an XSplit presenter and you want to just plug in a microphone and have high quality audio going to your presentation and you're using an audio capture device, something like this. That's going to work fine with XSplit Presenter as well. Also, actually, in XSplit Broadcaster, there's audio DSP effects, so you can go right in if you're not using a mix desk that has a lot of that stuff plugged in, or your audio interface doesn't have a lot of that stuff, like we mentioned limiters, stuff like that. XSplit Broadcaster has a lot of that built in in software, so if you have a more simpler audio interface, XSplit Broadcaster can do a lot of stuff for you. But what kind of audio device do you use, and why? What challenges have you faced with your audio setup? Let us know in the comments below or reach out on socials. If you've liked this video, do give it a like. That's the logical thing to do. If you've enjoyed it, subscribe because we've got a whole bunch of videos coming up. Not just in the studio, but we've got other series, myself and Lewis, right here on YouTube that's going to help you out as you create more content, work from home, do all sorts of good stuff. So like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Chris Slight and I will see you very soon.